Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. What I'm going to go through with you now is a combustion calorimeter just to show you the setup and the kinds of uh, problems that can take place and how our value might appear to be less exothermic, so that's less negative, than a theoretically calculated value. First thing we need to look at for this then is what does the setup actually look like. We've got our copper cam, which is our calorimeter just here, which we fill with a known mass of water. We assume one gram equals one centimeter cubed for the water. Thermometer, can't stand all set up. And we've got our spirit burner at the bottom. Now, actually performing this experiment then, what you would do, you need to know the mass of fuel that you combust throughout this. And since we can't directly weigh that very easily, what we're going to do is a before and after. So at the start of the experiment, making sure you know if you've got the lid on or not, you would record the mass of all of that, all of our spirit burner, and then you would perform the experiment where this is lit and it's heating the water. You would then finish the experiment, allow this to cool, and then weigh it again. And then the difference between those two values will give you the mass of the fuel combusted. So that's an experimental context of a number that you normally just get given. You're normally just told a certain amount is combusted in the reaction. What we need to record at the top up here, I've already mentioned we need to know the mass of the water that's inside the calorimeter, inside our copper can. But we also need to record the starting temperature and then the maximum temperature that we reach. Because then that's going to give us a delta T. What we can then do very early on with our setup like this, and the normal calculation that goes with this, is Q equals MC delta T. And it will give you an answer in joules, and that's the amount of heat released by that particular experiment at that time. It's the amount of energy released. So, the M value can be a little bit of confusion. The M value is the mass of the water being heated. It's always the mass of the water, or the, we can say the aqueous component, if we're using the direct method. But this is the indirect method. You don't actually know, when you do Q equals MC delta T, anything about the kilojoules per mole, because you haven't actually considered anything about the fuel in that calculation. You are literally just using the mass of the water that gets heated, the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.18, and the delta T, the temperature rise, that you record from the starting point to the maximum. The next thing you're going to do is convert your answer into kilojoules. So you divide your joules answer that comes out of the Q calculation by a thousand, that gives you a kilojoules number. And normally what happens, either within the same question or split up into a different section, keep an eye on the units if you're doing an OCR paper because they do normally give them to you, is you need to convert this into a kilojoules per mole value. Now, the kilojoules per mole value you get by doing delta RH or delta CH, because it's a combustion one, equals minus Q divided by the number of moles which reacted to give that Q value. What this will do is it will give us a kilojoules value per mole. It just expresses a ratio for us. You don't need to know too much about that. You just need to know that if you take the Q value that you've calculated from the data, and divided by the number of moles that you actually combusted, then it will give you a kilojoule per mole quantity. Now we put the minus there to make sure that we get the right sign on our answer. And remember, this is a combustion calorimeter setup, so we absolutely do want a negative answer at the end. We want an exothermic number. The mole value you would get then by doing the mass, so remember we recorded the before and after of the spirit burner, divided by the MR of whatever fuel it is. So for example, if it was ethanol, that would be 46. And then that mole value allows you to get the kilojoules per mole quantity. A couple of things about our answer when we get it though. Four things specifically. Our answer is an experimental enthalpy change. And as a result, it may appear less exothermic. So that's a less negative number. So like minus 800 compared to minus 1000. Ours would be the minus 800. It would appear less exothermic than a theoretical one. And there's four main reasons. Now, two of those reasons are specific to this kind of calorimeter, but other calorimeters, like the direct method, the one that we do in class, that has got kind of universal things that can apply to it. One of those is heat loss to the surroundings. You could have heat loss from the sides of the actual calorimeter itself or from the flame of the spirit burner. Also, we're not 100% certain often in the exam whether we are working under standard conditions and non-standard conditions could get a different uh, set of data. Now, specific to the combustion calorimeter, what we could say is it got so hot that the water evaporated out of the top, or we could get incomplete combustion. And what I've unfortunately got all over my hands here is bits of the carbon deposits which have appeared on the sides of the calorimeter here 
because of that incomplete combustion. So we're not getting the maximum amount of energy from our fuel combusting because some incomplete combustion which would release carbon, as we can visibly see, or some carbon monoxide could be taking place. I hope that clears up some of the calorimeter work that you need to know before you go into your exams, either in the first or second year of the course. Stay tuned to the playlist for any other practical context videos, and until then, happy revising.